Hi, it's Elvin from the Mind Body Project. Day number 10. What do you do when you're struggling? So this is part two. Part one, again, I'll say it again, um, was me, uh, what I was doing to get out of a situation um, of struggling with regards to my shoulder operation. And this is part two, where I'm just giving you some other things to think about if you're not already doing them. Um, from part five, um, we was talking about uh, writing a list. In other words, chunking down so you're not overwhelmed, making sure that you chunk your life, split your life into bits, um, mark, well, describe what a 10 out of 10 is. And then what you want to do is write down what number you are at the moment, like I've done here, and then prioritize which ones um, that you're going to do, and then create an action plan uh, to get to make sure that you're actually moving up from two a ten, yep. So that's what we've been doing so far. And number ten is constant and never-ending improvement. Yeah, so it's constant, never can I? Yeah, constant, never-ending improvement. One of the things that I um, that needs to be emphasised when, it, especially when, if your uh, depression or in fact anybody, every single person, if you want to be successful, then you want to be constant, never an improvement. Yeah, you would see, I mean, I regard Tony Robbins as the best coach in the world, best coach, but he is constantly improving. That's why he's the best, because he's constantly, every day, he's training, learning new techniques. It's the same with them. Bandler, Richard Bandler, he's constantly learning, learning new things, developing themselves. Uh, John Grind is exactly the same. Robert Dills, uh, Brian Tracy, uh, Jay Abrahams, all these top people are going out there and learning more, better, faster ways to do things. Yeah, there's constant and never ending improvement. How can we improve? How can we create more value uh, for customers? How, as I said, it's constant and constant, and never ending improvement. So. When it comes to something like if you're, okay, let me just draw this. Hope you can see this here. Um, so the list here. So let's say this is where dysfunction is. So I'm just going to put a D there, and this is excellence here. Yeah. So, so what happens at the moment? This is a sort of uh, thing that I see going on at the moment. This is our current health model when it comes to treating, well, helping someone with depression or anxiety. It is, right, average, because any, anything we do is below average. Yeah, the average of the average, I'd say. Yeah, that's our healthcare model. You get randomized sample of average people, and then you take the average of the average people. Yeah, that's how we do things. Um, so here's the line here. This is where, so basically you're going to have to put these dysfunctions down here. Um, if people go beyond this line and they're down here, then they go to one of the services and they will go and get help um, with the IAP services or psychological well-being practitioners or counselling or um, the psychotherapists or psychologists. Um, so you'll go and get some help, yeah, depression, anxiety, whatever. Um, you've got, uh, what, again, whatever support you need, you'll, you'll get that. Um, and if it goes really low, if it goes down here, then you're going to secondary care where you're sort of kept in, um, get, got, got even more help. Yeah. So, so this is dysfunction down here. And what the government's role, the way, this is the way that I look at it, what the government's role is to do is to get you to um, up here, move you up here, move you to here, and then let you go. Yeah, so right, you're no longer our responsibility. You're below average, we're gonna leave you there uh, because now you're not bad enough to see us. Yeah, that's the way that I look at that. That is the model, isn't it? Let's figure it, there's no B in there, but that is the model. So, but once you're there, what they don't give you is the skills to move yourself up to excellence. They don't give you those skills to do that. And what you've got to understand is you, that you, if you think about it as like constant and never any improvement, then you will start moving up this ladder. 
yeah you'll start moving up constantly so it's like how do i improve to get the next step if you're if you're one of these people who go ah it's not bad enough now then you'll end up going back there that's why people do yo-yoing or relapse is because you go to a certain point and then you stop you stop progressing once you stop you either go that way or you go that way yeah it's as simple as that so if you're not progressing you're depressing you're going you're going into the dysfunction part yeah and if you're going that way then again now you're bad enough you can come and see us again yeah then they'll try and get you to the exactly the same point here and then let you go again and that's basically the role um I've sort of studied that and looked at that quite a bit and I, as I said worked in sort of that down here a bit and is essentially that's what people are doing they're trying to get you so that you are not essentially this is going to sound bad but you're not their problem anymore <laughs> yeah someone else's problem there and it's really bad but that is essentially I mean that's all the resources that they've got to do so it's, that's again that's as far as we can go with the money um, but if you start taking responsibility for yourself and making sure that you are learning, if you understand what I'm telling you here, if you were struggling here and you were seeing someone, um, if you, I mean, you're you looking at this and you're seeing someone, you've got to understand it. When you get to about here, below average, they're going to let you go and then you've got to find the way to get to excellence yourself. Now, how do you do that? And you start following excellent people, people who are at the top. Now, that usually frightens people and um, or it winds people up when they're looking at people who are excellent. But what you've got to done, start doing is rather than them as a person, it's what they are behaviorally doing. Yeah, that's what you need to learn. It's what are they doing because you are a human being who are capable, who's capable of learning what they do. Yeah, that's how good you are. And you don't know it yet. And that's not yet. But you can, again, you are, have the ability to learn what other people are doing to get to the top as well. Yeah. So, you, But to do that, you need to start doing the same behaviours as they do, start having the same thought patterns and start, um, as I said, studying and wanting and have the desire to actually get to excellence. Yeah. You need to have a desire to get there. And once you do, again, then you can move up this yeah to excellence and to stay at excellence you have to keep improving yeah because if you don't if you get to excellence and stop then you'll end up going back down this way so you have to keep going um, constant and never-ending improvement yeah that's that's the name of the game so it, even if you think that yeah, yeah there's nothing wrong with me but if you're not doing anything to um, do any personal development um, any learning is like, I mean, as I said, I've told you that I'm going to be doing a, um, I've, do, I've been doing meditation, but I want to go deep with it. I want to go and actually really learn a lot about it, everything that I can about it, test everything, try everything, because I'm quite intrigued with some things that I've just learned recently. And I think it's going to help for my personal um, development master's course. But I'll constantly be making newer courses, better courses. Um, as the more I learn, that I'll, I'll keep making courses, as I said, for that. But I'm again, constant, never-ending improvement. It's just that's the way. That's the direction you're going to head in. And if you do that, you're progressing. If you're progressing, you're happy. So that is number ten: constant, never-ending improvement. Uh, hopefully, because this is the end of the struggling part. So hopefully that you're not struggling anymore. Um, hopefully you're a lot happier hopefully you understand um, a key theme that I mentioned earlier on in this which was you need to be in a good state first of all and before you can analyze your life so any of these uh, things here when you're splitting up your life you want to be in a good state yeah there's plenty of ways I've given you on part one how many ways you can be in a good state. You've got gratitude, physical activity, what are you eating, um, deep breathing um, techniques, um, so your meditation, uh, and if you're changing your physiology, new code games, uh, juggling, uh, there's so many different things to change your state, but again, physical activity is very easy to do. Uh, getting out there, speaking to your friends, socializing, um, 
but once you've done, once you've um, got into a good state, then do your thinking. Yeah, then do your thinking, and then constant and never-ending improvement. You always want to be de developing your inner world, because if you're developing your inner world and you're building your resources in your inner world, then the outer world is going to seem like a much better place. So this is me out for this. Um, hopefully that you've learned from me struggling um, and I'll see you again very soon.